you guys wanted to see a disappointing products video and that's what I'm bringing you today. I am sharing with you products that have failed me that I just do not like. I've never done a video like this before because I was afraid it might lean a little bit negatively, but I really like to watch videos like these because I find them to be incredibly valuable to help me save money. And I think that's why you guys have been wanting to see a video like this as well. And I like to provide value when I make videos for you guys. So any other fabulous video ideas that you have, leave them down below. I have an assortment of products here of various types that have just thoroughly failed me and perplexed me in many ways. So we're going to talk about that today. And if you guys want to see how I got this makeup look, that is going to be my next video, I do believe. So if you're not subscribed to this channel, please hit that subscribe button, become part of the family, hit that notification bell as well so that you are notified when I upload. And let's get into these horrendous products. Really quickly, every time anybody does this kind of a video, you have to give the standard disclaimer. Just because these didn't work out for me does not mean that they're horrible products for everybody. They may have really worked out for you. Everybody's different. We have different skin types, different climates, different preferences. They could be great products for someone else. They just disappointed me for one reason or another. Please don't be offended if you really like these products. They could be really great for you and that's great. I always try to get products to work out. I hate disliking products and I don't care if these were sent to me by a brand. Some of them were. I give every product a fair shot when it comes to liking it or disliking it. So let's go. The first I'm going to talk about is the Moroccan Oil Extra Volume Shampoo and Conditioner. I only have the shampoo here because I gave the conditioner to my daughter, Brooke, and I don't know why I didn't give her the shampoo already as well, but I meant to. So I have fine hair, I have a lot of it, and we'll get into my skin type in a little bit too, because those are important for you guys to know when it comes to what I like and don't like. The Moroccan Oil line is a great line overall, and I do love their hair oil that you put on your hair. The light version is my preference. Even though it says it's for extra volume, this gunked up my hair and weighed it down terribly. I don't even know why they marketed these for extra volume. It says it's a gently cleansing volume boosting formula that restores health with argan oil and nutrients that adds body and shine to length and fine hair. This just made my already fine hair look duller and more length than it already was. This is a huge fail for me. Many of you have already heard me talk about this powder. It was a huge favorite of mine when it first came out. This is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder and a lot of you loved it too. And it was great because it had this wonderful texture to it. It was light and airy. Okay, it's kind of smoking here. And when you applied it to your face, it kind of felt wet, but it really just melted into the skin. And if you have oily combination skin like mine, it was a great setting powder. It didn't make your skin look powdery or heavy. It was just really beautiful both under the eyes and on the face. So I went to use it a few months later and the unique texture that made it what it was, the Hydra part, was gone. It no longer felt cooling on the face. It just felt like any other powder. It applied like any other powder. This is a product that I kept tightly closed with the little flip top lid, with the screw top lid, and kept it in a drawer. So there is no way any air got in here and evaporated the water component of it. I talked about this in a fails video and pretty much every single one of you that had this powder reported the same thing. I emailed the company, never got a response back. I really want to say I like all the products that I've tried from Becca. This one was just not what it was supposed to be after a few months and I'm sorely disappointed in it because it had the opportunity to be just a really great product. I've discovered over the past few years that I really like the scent of grapefruit in a lot of the products that I try. I don't like to eat grapefruit, but I like the way it smells when it is part of a fragrance or a lotion. And I actually do like it when it's part of the flavor of something, just not the fruit itself. I purchased this Body Shop Pink Grapefruit Energizing Body Butter 
thinking I would really like it. I really like a lot of the Body Shop scents and I love the consistency and the hydration of their body butters. I ordered it online. I should have returned it because you can see how much I have left. I think I dipped into it twice because this was one of those things where I thought once it sinks into the skin, maybe it'll smell differently. No. This smells like straight up grapefruit. If you had a grapefruit cut open in front of you, this is what that smells like. So if you like that scent, you would like this. But when I put this on my body, I don't have the body chemistry that typically holds on to fragrance. It smelled like I was walking around carrying a grapefruit around all day long. When I wore this, I could not stand it. So this was a huge fail for me. For some of you, this may be a success. You may just love grapefruit that much. It really looks nice with the shirt that I have on and the eyes that I have on though. It was too strong for me. And I don't usually say that about the Body Shop lotions, but this was, mm. no, no. I've really tried to make this next product work. I like the brand and I've heard people complain about these before and I thought, you know, maybe it's because they just expect a lot out of these and they're just not giving it a fair shot. Maybe it's just like an ordinary palette, which it shouldn't be, even though the price point's actually pretty okay for this brand. This is the Natasha Denona Mini Star Palette. I love the color combination of this and I really loved it for this shade right here. It's one of those unique shades and it's one of the reasons why I bought the palette and I thought this could give a really great look. This palette is not easy to work with. I have the Natasha Denona Viva palette. I love it. This is a shade that with one or two swipes of your finger, you should get some nice pigment and this is what comes off on my finger. Hardly anything. And here's what this watch looks like on my hand. It's just disappointing. These are each of the three shimmery shades swatched on the back of my hand. You can see the chunkiness of that bottom kind of golden shade down here. I just don't enjoy using this palette. I find the quality to be subpar. I would not recommend this palette to anyone. I have heard that the mini nude palette is the way to go if you want to try one of her mini palettes because they are priced pretty nicely. That's probably the one I would go for. I just found I kept having to pack and pack and pack on this shade right here. And it seemed like every time I got any pigment out of this, some of it would flake off. It was just a big fail of a palette. And when you think about Natasha Denona, you don't want any of those palettes to be fails. I don't care how much they are, if they're the minis or the large palettes, you want them to work nicely. I have drugstore palettes that work out better than this palette. So I do not recommend this palette. I'm pulling two products out here to show you why one of them specifically is a fail. They're both from ColourPop. One of them is in my regular rotation and the other one is in my fail bin. The one in my regular rotation is the Precision Brow Pencil. The one that is a fail is the Brow Boss. And I wanted this one to work because I feel like it was a little bit finer. The all white pencil is the Precision Brow and the one that has the brown tip is the Brow Boss. And you can see the tip, if you look closely on the Brow Boss, it's a little bit finer. So that's the one that I thought would work out for me because I typically like a very fine brow pencil. So I'm gonna take the Precision Brow and just, you know, kind of do what you do, right? Without looking, which is a little bit difficult. You see the pigment there? So here's the Brow Boss, same amount of pressure, harder pressure, harder pressure. It's so waxy, you just have to press so hard to get any pigment, it's ridiculous. I don't know why they make these so different, but they do. So the shade that I have in Brow Boss is light brown, and the shade that I have in Precision Brow is Cool Cocoa. The Cool Cocoa does work out better for me, but the pigmentation in the Brow Boss is just not good. It's really hard to work with, so that was a big fail for me. This is a product I kind of forgot about because it's just been sitting over with my other setting sprays not being used. This is the Beauty Blender Redo Set and Refresh Spray. It probably has the best packaging of any of my setting sprays, refreshing sprays. So you do have to shake it up really well before you use it. I'm gonna shake it up and just show you what it looks like when you mix the solution together. It turns into this just all cloudy mixture. The reason why I don't love this. Number one, I said earlier, I have oily combination skin, and this does say it is a set and refresh spray. The set part 
insinuates that it is going to set your makeup once you're finished. I do not find that to be so. I don't find that my makeup lasts any longer when I use this. I do find this to function more along the lines of Matte Fix Plus in that it does take away that powdery look. However, as someone with oily combination skin, I feel like it gives me somewhat of a dewier look than what I enjoy. If you are someone who does have normal or dry skin, this might work for you, but for me, it was just a little bit dewier than what I enjoy. There is an outer cap and there is an inner cap as well. I'm gonna spray this on my face and probably look like a grease ball for the rest of my video, but I want you guys to see the fineness of this spray and I'm probably going to have wet hair as well because it kind of goes all over. It is such a fine mist, you almost can't even feel it on your face. But because it has a fine mist, I feel like you waste a lot of product. I don't know if you can see just how widely it disperses. I do feel like some of it gets on my pants when I spray it instead of my face. But there we go. Now I'm all nice and dewy for the rest of the video and I'll probably be a grease ball by the end. I bought this with kind of high hopes because I can spray MAC Fix Plus on my face and kind of take away the powdery look and then put a setting spray over it or top it with a finishing powder and I don't feel oily or get oily again, re-get oily, however you want to say that. But with this, I feel like it just makes me a little oilier than I want to be and I do feel a little bit sticky after. So this was just a product that I was a little bit disappointed in and I really, really wanted to like it. And I don't. On that same beauty blender note, we do have to talk about what I talked about in my May faves and fails, and that is the fact that the pink beauty blender is no longer the same texture that it used to be. I'm really disappointed in that. They are more porous. There are more holes in them. They're just not the same. They're not the same bounciness or anything. I just find I am looking to other beauty sponges instead of the pink beauty blender. I'm going to try the black one, but I've heard from some of you that the black beauty blenders are having the same problem. So I've tried the e.l.f. It's a really great option. I love the L'Oreal. I've got a few others that I'm going to be trying as well. So if you found a great foundation sponge, beauty sponge that you love, leave it down below in the comments for me because I'm on the hunt. I don't know why they felt the need to change a good thing, but it has changed. So that's also a product disappointment for me that's happened very recently. This next one I don't have here in front of me. It was such a quick return. I practically ran back to Sephora the next day to get rid of it. I could not stand it. The Fenty Pro Filter Concealer, I'm sure there's some longer name for it, was such a bad concealer for me. If you have dry textured under eyes, if you are over 40 like I am, or even if you're younger and you have dry textured under eyes, I would stay far, far away from that concealer. It was so incredibly drying. I was going to use it in one of my Get Ready With Me Sephora haul videos. It was so bad. I did not even want to use it and ruin an entire makeup look. I wiped it off and started completely over with my under eye area. It was that bad. It looked dry. It looked patchy. I wouldn't even do any kind of a makeup look with it underneath my eyes. So unless you have oily under eyes, I cannot recommend that product to you. If you have gotten that to work for you, would love to hear from you down below. The NARS Climax Mascara. I heard a lot of people like this mascara and it was not good for me. I put it with my fails pretty quickly. It's supposed to be volumizing and lengthening, I think. I don't have any information about this in front of me. If I recall correctly, this either smudged or flaked on me. I can't remember which one. It doesn't really matter which one. If it does either of those things during the day, it's going in the fail bin. I have too many mascaras that don't do that to bother with mascaras that do. I remember it looking pretty good. It just functioned poorly as the day went on. It's disappointing because the packaging is pretty cool too. This next product is more of a WTF product for me. This was sent to me from Wander Beauty and I just don't understand it at all. And I have quite a few products from Wander Beauty that I do like and some that I am testing out now. This one, I, I don't know. This is the Play All Day Translucent Powder. It's pretty big for a translucent powder. It's got a powder puff in here filled with powder. It smells kind of like sunscreen. 
I'm not sure if there's sunscreen in here. I don't really care because I'm not gonna be using it. The powder is inside the powder puff. You touch up your face during the day, which, you know, I should probably do right now since I just greased it up with the Beauty Blender Spray. Now, I find that it works pretty well for touch-ups, and that's what it's for. It's for quick touch-ups. And I can see the powder kind of clouding up as I apply it. So I know that there's powder in it. Here's the thing. I don't see how I wash this. How do you clean it? And how do you know when the powder runs out? It's like you can really see how much powder is in here. I feel like you're not getting a lot for your money at all and you're just getting your dirty face all over this and there's no way to wash it because if you wash it you're gonna get the powder that's in here wet. I just do not get this concept at all. It seems very unhygienic as someone who really likes to keep my makeup products clean. There's no way to clean this and there's just no way to gauge how much you have. You know, if you go out at night and you're at the tail end of it, are you blotting with nothing at some point? I don't get this at all. If you understand this, if you think that this is a good idea, let me know below. Now we have another product that I've talked about fairly recently, but if you missed that video, you would not know. This is the Pharmacy Honey Butter Beeswax Lip Balm. This is another brand that I do like a lot of their products. They did send this to me. I like the packaging. I like the slimness of it. It's easy to apply. It smells pretty decent. It's not a very strong smell, which I also like. I like the way it feels on the lips. But every time I've used it, my lips just get chapped after. All of the ingredients are natural. There are some ingredients in here that can give a reaction or make your lips chapped. And apparently I have had that reaction. And so that is what's happening. I just have other lip balms that I like a lot more than this. I just don't want to feel like I have chapped lips when I'm using a lip balm. So that is a product that I was very disappointed by because I really wanted to like it, especially when it feels so good on my lips and so nourishing. What are some products that you have been disappointed by lately? If you have something fabulous that you think I would love that might replace some of these things that I've been disappointed by, leave those down in the comments for me as well. Let me know if you find this type of video to be informative, to be valuable for you. If so, I can work these into my regular content. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.